I'm reacting to Tomika Kizuna Katai Earth Graner episode 7. And I'm starting my reaction in 1 0 go. Alright, let's see. Time. Whoa, looks like we're. Oh my. So I guess we might have a hot spring episode then going by the PV. That's what Ryan and Kugo, they're gonna resolve this. I don't think there's any doubt. Hmm. Actually like that. Seeing physical test and all that. They're gonna have to be physically fit if they wanna operate the mechs they usually use in the series. <laughs> Fits though, considering that he ain't wrong about that. You Hmm. Oh yeah, I actually like how they're building off of that. And they're not just straight up forgetting about that too. I like that cute little touch with them just eating the freaking potato chip there. <laughs> Looks like he's about to sprout fire there. Hmm. It's actually nice to see that with all the finer coordination details, Riger is better. I'm not right. I mean, when anything involves coordination, I meant to say Kuga's better, but Ragi's better when it comes to full-on using force. So I like the difference, differences between the two. In that regard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's wasting the water resource. I mean, the protectors of Earth, he should at the very least do his best to even do the minor things. And when is it going to take away the lighting and the water from the fossil like how he promised Oliver and Clutch? Oh, that's cute expression there. What, are they going to hit up another nation? Oh. Well, we're going to talk about their own home planet, finally. Oh. Huh. Whoa, she doesn't remember? Actually gives a grasp us as to a how long this thing has been going on. I actually like that kind of stuff. I wish we would have actually seen a flashback. But that actually puts in characterization. <laughs> she's gonna embarrass her in front of her friends. Oh, oh no, she's not embarrassed. Oh, that's cute. Actually, she was here. How good and positive the relationship actually is. They should have said nothing, they'd have been better off. Now he's gonna get angry at both of them. Oh, never mind. <clears throat> Has he been even keeping any of his promises, though? I like how. Kind of like how the, how the build, that's how the build up of the previous episode. Chamber stops doing that okay thing that she kind of did at the start of the series after they started telling her that that's the type of thing you do. That's actually like that cute little addition there. I still feel like if the series didn't displace so much shum on fucking stock footage though, which it kind of wastes like three to four minutes, it would be so much better. 
Because I'd love to see them do the follow through with him promising to take away their faucet water and their lighting when it comes to Clutch and Oliver's room. And, and all that kind of jazz. And I would have loved to have actually... Because that would have been cool if they'd have done it either in the previous episode or this episode. And same, I feel like if they would have had a flashback of how the world looked like, it at the very least give this series some great morality. Somewhat, even though, yes, overall I'm still going to root for our main heroes. But it could have at the very least given this show a bit more emotional gravitas. <clears throat> and hell, it could have maybe encouraged the kids to buy some of the spinners that involve... Chamber Oliver and Clutch, if they'd have some backstory on the villains a bit more. Because going by how they're trying to advertise toys, you would want to advertise the antagonists too, you know? Giving them some more backstory. To sell more toys. Kind of seems like a missed opportunity to sell toys and also to build on the story a bit more, but hey. That's just my thoughts on the matter. The episode hasn't done anything offensive so far, though. I'm just telling you how it could have improved. I had a feeling it was going to be the the case. Mm -hmm. Damn. But they can cover each other's weaknesses, though. Hmm. Hmm, exactly. Can't ignore that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> what a show off. Probably does things too reckless, that's probably Lel's weakness. Okay, how in the fu- Are they soulmates with Raika and Kuga? <laughs> the amount of time they just- Happen to freaking collide with each other? Come on now. <laughs> That's bullshit. There's no way I'm gonna believe they just happen to come around with those two uh, instantly. They're, um, they're just gonna skip to the reverse for the most part, like the episodes. They're actually dragging this shit out now. You've got to be joking. Okay. That still took a while, though. It could have made the motions a bit faster. Hmm. Still feels like too much of a coincidence, so that they just happened to show up where our boys are at, though. Oh, my. At least they had a dance scene that I have them actually... Go through the elevator, walk outside of the elevator, then and get inside the cars. At least they had the DNC. I'm not gonna give it compliments for that because they're still making us sit through the animation where they put the fucking car in their in their bracelet and they still do the wheel charge thing. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna afterwards transform and do the pose they do with the two of them side by side. Yeah, I can already imagine you're going to see the sign angle with both of them back to back again. <clears throat> and then they'll do that pose. They really like dragging this shit out. Yep, side by side pose. Like, you know. Not just that, they even have the goal to even reuse the animation where <clears throat> their back gets really, really close to the chair and it glows green. At least that explains why they won't be used from the get-go. I actually like how they utilized the neighbor to explain that info. At least it prevents someone from saying, man, this is a plot hole. So that's positive, actually. Probably should have explained that earlier, but hey, better late than never. Okay, that's a kind of a cutesy little creature there. Hmm.
Seems like it should be an easy enemy for them to take out. But then again, looks can be completely deceiving. Hmm. Another thing uh, that I'm noticing is the series never really shows us months instances where people are in danger, people are running away screaming that much. Okay, finally you have people running. I actually like this, showing you some interesting physical consequences regarding this. Oh, it just starts uh, most of his sentences with body. <laughs> Valve Whale is always bloodlusted. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Someone ate their cornflakes today. And I always love the hero music that plays too. It kind of sounds a bit inspirational. Da -da -da. Can't wait to see him bust up some heads. Oh. Probably the... <clears throat> it probably feels like it's gonna affect him negatively if it touches him. Can't blame him for being cautious. Okay, well, where'd that come from? <laughs> what the fuck? How do you forget? <laughs> you should have, you know, their father should have made a, f a freaking manual. <laughs> How do you forget that major detail? Oh, man. Should be doable, though. I mean, last time Kuga whooped their asses, and it's only just a level one creature, so they should be able to actually handle it. At least you would think, right? You know, it was impressive seeing the animation the first time, but seeing it like four, five times, it's like. Kind of loses its effect a little bit. No, significantly. What am I saying? Okay, never mind. It actually evolved this time. Kinda wish it would have done that super uber transformation from the get go. But <laughs> like, I just had a epic music, and I'm like, Dang. that's a nice twist there. <laughs> okay, I got it. That that dot was a good comedy feature. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that was good. That was good. I would have loved to have seen the facial expressions of. Could go though, I mean, the scene funnier than it already was, but hey, it still worked from a comedic standpoint. Hey, it doesn't look that bad. Okay, now it's looking worse. Right, good. 
creature is quick if it can't even get close. Damn, this got good aim. Oh, whoa! <laughs> he actually used the wet part on them. <gasps> wet line. I actually like it. It's taking baby steps. He's actually fighting his fears. <laughs> That's good. I actually wasn't expecting character development for Leo and Cheetah. That's actually nice. And that actually fits in pretty well because earlier Leo was like, I have no weaknesses, but it's nice to actually see him deal with it. Deal with one of his weaknesses, actually. And you know, the faucet design of the Dumb Buster actually works considering that they did use a pull to try to summon the creep. Oh, we're actually gonna get close quarters gone. All right. Actually want, well, I've actually been waiting to see this. <laughs> oh, Chamber's not actually Mala. She's actually going in for the That's nice. Camber actually, even though she didn't succeed, she actually still tried to go for him for the kill. Alrighty. Most animes, you'd have a character fun monologue, especially when uh, anime that's in like a kid's uh, friendly slot. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It looks like they both wet themselves with fear. <laughs> okay. That was good. I actually really dug that. <laughs> I'll give it credit, it's just had some good parts to it. I just love how when he's like, oh, right, it sounded like Lel was orgasming while saying that. <laughs> Hey, it works. If it works, who gives a shit about the end result? <sighs> yep, yeah, what I've been waiting for. Still, though. It'd be so hyped if they wouldn't just abuse this transformation every episode, though. But hey, talk about taking recycling to the max, though. I'll give it credit for that. The studio, they sure, they sure know how to recycle professionally. <laughs> oh man. But honestly though, I think they've pretty much wasted like three minutes of the runtime and just nothing but transformations. And that's why I even stopped taking count because honestly if I do that, it would be mind boggling. I just love that with the sword, it just looks ready to kill. I actually hope this time we see some choreography before he utilizes his special attack though. I hope. You've gotta be kidding me. Are, he's, is, are they gonna have him use their special move now? Are we really gonna get the dumb... Dumb Buster stand there and let itself get hit because uh, that'd be terrible. That'd be really fucking terrible if it went down that rat.
I do like the song though, the double double fire. Yeah. The other thing, the series does some good things. Okay, now this is bullshit. The anime just is gonna stand there and let itself be blown up. That's gonna be some horse shit. That is gonna be some fucking horse shit. At the very least, they should have let them have a fight against the enemy and pinned them down so that then they're stunned enough to actually do a special move. Wow, and it just stands there. It could have moved to the left or the right. Okay. And this episode was doing so good before, before the fight, it was doing a good job. This is bullshit. This is honestly horseshit. At least the fight team was horseshit. I do like that joke though. <clears throat> I'm an A, he fought his fears. <laughs> I mean, it kind of looks more like a lamb with that dirt, though. <laughs> He's gonna have to deal with it. Say with the cheetah. Got a point there. <laughs> That's what. He ain't hiding it well with that sweat spot. I like how the hell just takes the little L this time. <laughs> oh man. I'm assuming that's gonna be Farun's brother at the time of Test Machine. Okay, this episode is going to be tough to grade because it did good. It did good in some bits. Hmm, I ain't going to lie. I mean, I'll give it respect for what it deserves. <clears throat> I love the character development they gave to Lel and I actually like how they actually did explain that he is scared of something. So that is a positive <clears throat> that I'm not going to overlook. I'd say from a narrative standpoint. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to throw up. I think I got something stuck in my throat. I'd say from an artist standpoint, that's commendable. Actually showing the weaknesses of each of the vehicles is nice. It gives them more personality. It makes them feel like they're their own person. Yeah, it's the bare minimum when it comes to characterization, but it's still better than nothing. And I do like how they expound the whole concept of teamwork too in this specific episode, so I'll give you credit for that. At least when it comes to seeing them train together and all that kind of stuff, so I'll give the compliments for that. And also, what I liked is you actually get to see Chamber actually take on Raiga at least a little bit before the other brother interferes. I actually like seeing that scene. So there were some positives, and them running away was actually pretty hilarious, too. Oh. Looks... Alright, that looks like a sweet PB. Oh, actually seeing her in a casual outfit. Okay, I'm hyped up. Seeing Chamber in a casual outfit with her friends? That looks like fun. Okay, next episode looks pretty damn good. <clears throat> but in saying that, though... This episode falls into the same weaknesses that the other episodes had. Aside from abusing stock footage, I mean, come on. How in the fuck did the writers think it's a good idea? Yeah, let's just make the enemy stand there 
and let the character drag out its special move. There was like literally <clears throat> 30 seconds of Raga utilizing a special move. Literally, the transformation sequences last longer than the fucking fights. So, it, from a battle choreograph choreography standpoint, there was a lack of creativity here in this episode. I'd be a liar. I was like, oh yeah, the battle choreography is good. No, I'd be a lying sack of shit if I said that to y'all. Y'all, y'all deserve the truth, so... That's really one of the downsides about this episode that I can't overlook. And the animation was actually some of the worst in the series, too. A lot of still shots. Other episodes did a good job at least hiding their lack of budget. This one... I feel like the animators didn't even bother trying to hide their fucking lack of budget. So it's one of the worst visual efforts from the series. But it has character development. So the scale of 1 in 10, 1 being abysmal, 10 being exceptional, 5 being average. I thought I was a 4.75 out of 10. It could have been a 5 or a 6 if the action they built up actually looked good. But they fucked it up. Last episode was pretty damn good. But this episode took a step back from the action standpoint. And that's why... I can't rate it. I can't even rate it average. I've rated just below average because it did enough to not be a piece of shit, though. But I expect better from the series because episode six, it's at the bar high. And but the pity for the next one looks great, though. I'm probably gonna dig the next one if it's as good as I imagine it to be. But yeah, these are my thoughts. Um, I thought this was a step down. Hopefully, it picks it back up again. But anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment on your thoughts and I feel about my reaction in the comment section below. Rate the bit, share it, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later if you come back for more because I'm definitely pumped up for the next one. But anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching my video. And have a great...